Hello again and welcome back. Last week I showed you how to make a log cabin quilt using a jelly roll. Well today we're going to introduce the log cabin trimmer tool 2. The initial trimmer tool is for the 6 inch ruler. I have the ruler that will do 12 inch or 6 inch blocks. Here's the thing. There's a few tricks to this one that you're going to need to know. And it's not as simple as saying, oh, let's use this ruler on that jelly roll quilt. Mm, it's not going to work. So stay tuned and I'll tell you more. Hi, I'm Wendy J. Haney, and I'm here to show you that quilting does not need to be intimidating. Nope, it's fun, it's enjoyable, you just need to have the right information and shown to you in a way that you can absorb it and understand it, which is what I'm here for. Because you know what? Making quilted homemade items is priceless. It, it's just a wonderful feeling to be able to make them for friends and family. Let's get to it. Okay, the Creative Grids Log Cabin Trim Tool 2. You say that a few times, okay? Anyway, that is here. I picked it up and I was thinking, oh, great. I'm going to be able to show you how to use that with the uh, Jelly Roll Log Cabin quilt I did on the previous video. Nope, not so much. In order to use this ruler, you need to have your uh, strips and everything cut a very specific size in order to make this work. In the Jolly Roll quilt, we did everything with two and a half inch strips, including a two and a half inch square in the middle. Today, we're going to talk about making a finished 12 inch block. And in that case, you need a three and a half inch square in the middle. Voila! Here is the block I made. And as you can see, the center block is much larger than all the strips around it. In the Jelly Roll quilt, basically they were all two and a half inch strips and a two and a half inch square, so everything finished two inches. It was all nice and even. In this case, you've got a much larger square and then smaller strips. For, in order to make this ruler work, you need to cut your strips at a minimum of two and a quarter inches in order to make this work. And since I told you those were one and a half inch finished strips, you're going, hmm, hmm, does the math work? The benefit of using this ruler is we're cutting most of your strips a little larger than you need them. Therefore, you're doing some trimming. Yup, I'm going to be honest. It takes a little more work than if you just, oh, excuse me, than if you just laid out your strips exactly the size you need them and sewed them together. But Maybe you struggle a little bit with your quarter inch seam or you want to be more accurate. Then this ruler can come in pretty handy. There are instructions on the ruler. So open them up, lots of instructions, and there's a QRC code there that you can scan and go watch a video. Okay, great. What the instructions do not tell you is what size strips you need. <laughs> Yep, it was like, okay, I know they have to be two and a half inches wide or two and a quarter inches wide at a minimum, but how long do they need to be? Here's the deal. They're basically saying, ah, cut a variety of stitch lengths because we're not going to worry too much on how long they are. Well, that doesn't work. You don't want to waste fabric just willy nilly. And you also need to make sure the strips you want to use are long enough. So I did the math for you. So in order to make, oops, sorry, this block, which finishes 12 and a half, and I have my lights on, my lights on one side, my darks on the other, and as you'll notice this time, I do have a red center. As I talked about in the original log cabin uh, jelly roll quilt tutorial, generally the center of your log cabin block is red or yellow to designate the heart of the home. I found some red fabric that worked. So basically these fabrics came from a tree skirt I made. So yeah, I'm using leftover strips. But as you can see here, you need, oops, I need to shift over to get them in the camera. Um, you need, it's helpful to have the right size strips cut ahead of time, in my opinion. So your center, 
three and a half inch square. Yep, you're gonna start with a three and a half inch square. Then you need, for your lights, they want a minimum of two and a quarter inches wide. Ah, I'm not gonna deal with a quarter of an inch. The whole point of this is trimming. So I'm going with two and a half inch strips. Believe me, if you're like me with quilting, you have two and a half inch strips all over the place. And in this case, a jelly roll does work really well for this. You just can't cut it like I did in my other video. But jelly roll strips will work fabulous for this, except for the center square. Square. <laughs> then you need to go pick out a separate piece of fabric. You won't need a lot to be able to get, get your three and a half inch squares for your center. Okay, <clears throat> so for your lights, I decided to cut my strips a half inch longer than I need. That said, if you don't want to do as much trimming, cut them exactly the way they're supposed to be. And then the ruler is probably less effective because you're more accurate anyway. So I'm doing a half inch longer on my strips than I need to be. So on my lights, I have a four inch and a six inch seven inch and a nine inch and a 10 inch and a 12 inch. Basically the size of your strips are two inches different in your, in your pairs. On my darks, I have a six inch and an eight inch, a nine and 11 and a 12 and a 14. Okay. And then I also kind of drew out this picture so I know what it needs to look like. So if I ever need to reference it, especially the first time, once you get your first block done, ah, then you're pretty golden. And then I can use that to reference and make sure I'm putting each of my squares on where they need to go. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna set these aside. And we're going to start with our lights. So here we go. We have our center red and I've got my four inch strip, which means as you can see here, I have, I have a four and a half inch. Um, I have a half inch difference, which is fine. So in other words, just put it on there, put it on there. And as you can see, maybe this has been fabric that I used and didn't need. So I took out the stitches to reuse it. So you're going to go to your sewing machine and you're going to sew that strip. Okay. There we go. And then you're going to come back and you're going to press it. Press to the outside. Press everything away from the center. Okay. So now you've got that. You want to turn it counterclockwise or to your left and you're ready to put on the next strip. Okay, with that said, you could just slap this on here because you've got extra length and extra width and match it up with your bottom block, but I'm sorry. I don't know if you can see that. This bothers me. How do I know that I'm getting that on there straight and not a little kitty wampus or a kitty wampus that way? Because then I don't, I don't know about you, but that ruler, <laughs> that ruler can't fix that problem. So with that said, I am a little particular. So I turn it to my left. So I know my center is at the bottom and I am going to trim it. So make sure you line up nice and square on the bottom of your three and a half inch square. And you have another one here. So you're nice and straight. That means, whoopsie, <laughs> that means you know you're trimming this exactly where it needs to be. So now when you go and put this on, you can line up with your edges top to bottom. You've got it and you can leave extra hanging off the top, hanging off the bottom. That's the whole point of this. Okay. So sit tight for a minute. And I'm going to go sew this. I have now sewn on the second piece of the fabric. And once again, you can see that I have extra, extra on my edges. Now, 
The instructions in the ruler do not indicate you should trim this yet. Instead, they want you to put on two more pieces. Your this one and this one and then trim it. Well, well, no, no, no. I didn't like that. So I'll and what did I do with my ruler? I don't know about you guys, but my rulers, they hide. They hide from me. I know they do. They just get up there and hide. So for me, I, because basically we're gonna, so here's where we had it. So now we're gonna turn it this way, counterclockwise to the left, and now I'm gonna sew on this side. So that means for me, I wanna trim up that and get that trimmed off. Well, then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna need to trim it up the other. It's like, no, no, no. So your log cabin ruler will not allow you to trim up at this point, but I get my Omni grid ruler out and we're gonna trim it. At this point, it needs to be five and a half. So we're gonna just do a little adjusting and get five and a half. Whoopsie. And then it will be so much nicer because when I didn't trim this this way, and the key thing when you trim up your log cabins, let's see if I can get this a little closer for you. When you trim up your log cabins, you want to pay attention to squaring up around your center square. So on your ruler, make sure you have a measurement line that is square around that center. If you do that, you will continue to keep it square all the way around. So we're five and a half. My square is good around my center. I'm five and a half at the bottom where I've already trimmed trim off that side and we're going to trim off that little bugger. All right, there we go. Okay, I'll just, let's get rid of those. Oops, and we lost one. I think I grabbed my wrong rotary cutter. I think I have another, let's see. We'll try a different one. Okay, so now my, my first square is nice and neat. That's where I left it. So now I grab my darks. So now I have my dark six inch because, because remember, I'm, I cut these a half inch longer than they need to be. So here's where we were at that we finished, turning it to the left counterclockwise and I'm gonna put on this one. Okay, okay. I sewed on this strip. I pressed it to the outside. And as you can see, I have my extras, but so I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise to my left and I'm probably gonna need <laughs> a little bit bigger ruler. We'll just use this one right now since I have it here. And actually, because it also has lines on it, it's gonna allow you to keep things all in line also. And I'm gonna just trim off this little edge piece that bothers me <laughs> when I sew on my next piece. Then I grab my next piece of my dark light, half an inch extra long, and it is my eight inch piece. So I'm gonna put that on here. Okay. Now, as you can see, I've sewn this one on and we've got a little hanging off on the edge, etc. So we've got extra here, here, and over here. This is the point the ruler tells you to actually trim the first time. So we're gonna get our ruler and I'm gonna show it to you with this red folder underneath it so that you can see the lines hopefully better. So as you're working with it, you want to be able to read the instructions on it. And at this point in time, the instructions say, use the, 
What does it say? Use the second square on the, hang on, I'm going to double check that. It says, yeah, use the second square from the corner. Okay, well, just made sense to me because you could look at your thing and how it fits. You're going to use this square here. Later, for the next step, it says use the third square. And I'm like, well, I use that one first. There's the next one. It's, it's black. The black squares are very, very obvious. <laughs> Guess what? There's also white squares. Let me, there we go. White squares right here. So here's the first square. So when your ruler is talking about using the first, second, third square to get your center square around to square things up, this is your first one. It's white. Here's your second one. It's black. Your third one is white. And your final one is the center. So when I was going through it, I... I'll be honest, I didn't really notice the white ones. It made sense when I picked this up to use this for the first one, but then they said use the third one. I'm like, no, you're not. You're using the second one. So learn from me. First square, second square, third square, fourth square. Okay, so there we go. It also has these dotted lines, all sorts of lines to help you square up your ruler, square up your block. So. Make sure it's all pressed. And then as you can see here, I'm getting my center square right in the square. Make sure that dark square on your ruler goes nicely around the squ center square in your block. Then you've got these dotted lines. These dotted lines you're gonna wanna match up with your seams. And this way. That helps keep you, because you can kind of, depending on how your sewing was, your center you could get squared up, but then you realize your seams are a little off. And that's why I squared up my initial square here before I, used, before I could trim up in this block, because it made things cleaner. And as you can see, we're trimming a fair amount of fabric. So we're gonna trim this off. Okay, and then we have to flip it. Okay, so now you've got your center square again and, and your, you really have no place to line up um, what you just cut, but you still have these dotted lines for your seams and I'm kitty wampus there right now. There we go. So just pay attention to those and be careful when you cut to not move your ruler. And you'll end up with a really nice square. Okay, so we set the ruler aside. And then what I this is where kind of a printout of your blocks are concerned, your darks, because then I want to get this back to where it was. This was the last uh uh, strip that I put on. Turn to my left and now I'm ready for the second set of my light colors which is a 7 inch and then a 9 inch. Basically we're going to do the same thing over and over. You just keep turning and trimming. Okay so I'm now for me these first strips Ah, we're fine. I, 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 don't need a, I don't need a pin. But as I get longer strips, I want to make sure they're not shifting on me. Well, because they're longer strips. So I'm going to throw in some pins on this one. Okay, and now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew this one. Now we have that strip sewn on. Turn it to your left. And for me, I want to whack off this little edge up here. See it there? It's actually maybe, there you go, there you go. So you can see there is that it's, it's longer because of course I'm working with strips that are a half inch longer than, than they need to be. Now, if you don't wanna mess with that and you have good 
quarter inch seams, cut these strips a half inch shorter than what I'm recommending and you're going to be cutting your strips exactly as you need. And then it's going to be important for you to match up your edges as you work on this. But this helps, you know, sometimes you get a little curve. So this allows me to be a little more precise. Okay. So there, so actually in that case, I sewed it on, turned it to my left. I trimmed it. Now I'm in the perfect position to add my next strip, which is a nine inch strip. Okay. I'm going to go sew this one on. And then what are we going to do? We're going to turn it to the left and I'm going to trim this piece. And then I'm going to grab my next dark, which is this one. And I'm going to put on my nine inch piece. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to press it out. I'm going to turn it to the left. I'm going to trim it and I'm going to put the next piece on, which is a 11 inch dark. So this is what we're going to end up with. And I'm going to go to the sewing machine and sew all these because I don't think you need to watch me put each piece on and do the exact same thing I did the last time over and over. So we're going to do that. I'm going to put on the, the other light, two more darks, and then I will be back and we'll show you the next step with the ruler. Before I put that last strip on that I was going to sew, I want to show you one more thing. As you're getting more blocks, more strips around your block, there's actually, you're going to not just be trimming the one. So I've just sewed this dark on. I'm turning it to the left. And as I've been doing is I've been trimming, as you can see here, this is longer than the other. <laughs> I'm going to twist it, but I don't know if you can see there or not. This one is also extra wide. So let me go back here. So in this regards, I'm actually going to be trimming both my bottom strip and my top strip. So this is not unusual. So don't feel like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? Just as you're sewing around your block, use your middle strip as your, your straight, ensuring things look good in your uh, middle too. And then I have a little extra here and up here, up here that I want to trim off before I put, before I put my last strip on. Otherwise it makes it, in my opinion, a little hard to make sure this strip is on straight because you don't know where to, um, where to square it up with. So there we go. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and we'll get that one on and then we're ready for the ruler again. Okay, here we are. I've got, now I have my center, two sets of lights, two sets of dark. I am now ready for my next um, round of trimming with the ruler. And it says to use the third square. Per our conversation before, the first square is white, second one is black, third square is white. So we're gonna just Get that center white square around, ah, get my fingers around the edge here, around my center square. I've got dotted lines, match up with my seams, and eh, that seems a little, you know what? It's not going to be perfect. This ruler really helps you square things up and makes it much more perfect, but None of us is perfect. So even I, as I go, it's like, oh, that line doesn't quite match up with my seam. Okay, well, if I move that up, okay, then my block is not quite there. It's like, you know what? You just kind of fudge and move it a little and make sure you get as many of your lines matching up and looking good as possible. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Actually, yeah, I'm very happy with that. So we're going to trim that side. 
And we're going to trim that side. And now we rotate it. And we're going to trim up the other, getting your, your third square in the middle. And you'll know if you're in the wrong square, <laughs> you're going to go, uh, uh, something's wrong. So you're going to know. Just find that square and get it around your square, center square. Get your seams, everything looking nice. And, ah, leftovers. Trim it up. Oops. There. Okay, there we go. I am now ready to add my next seam. Now remember, you just twisted this in order to trim it. So I always get it back where I last was, knowing, knowing you always put the last strip on that has a complete seam top to bottom. That always should be on your right hand side when you're ready to start adding the next strip. So if you were to go here, you go, oh, I got a, I got a seam here. That's not the side I want. Same here. Oh, this has got two seams. Nope. After you've twisted it and you're like, how do I get it back to center to know how to turn it to the left in order to put the next strip on, making sure the last strip you put on has a seam top to bottom. So now if I turn it to my left counterclockwise, I'm ready for my light. So my next light is a 10 inch. So I'm going to put my 10 inch on and it's a little longer. Once that's on, I'm going to turn it, <laughs> turn it to my left. I'm going to trim it. I'm going to put my 12 inch strip on. And then we're going to turn it. I'm going to trim my little edges. I'm going to put my dark 12 inch on and then my dark 14. I don't think you need to watch me do that. I think you're, you're understanding how I'm doing this. I'm going to go put those on and then we'll come back for the last trim. And dang it, I love these fabrics. I, <laughs> hang on a minute, phone's buzzing. I used these on a tree skirt. And so when I was looking for two and a half inch strips to do a sample of this, I grabbed these and now I'm like, hmm, I'm going to need to go see if I can find some more of this fabric in my stash. I hope I have some left because this is yummy and I'm thinking it would make a very pretty um, holiday table runner if I maybe added one more um, log cabin block. So I'm going to go sew these and then I'll be back. Here we go. I have put all of the strips on, as you can see. We got little things hanging off the edge, but that's where the ruler comes in. And this time it'll be pretty obvious. Basically it's the square in the center of your ruler. So a little reflection. <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. That's not going to work. Reflection from the light above me. Okay. So just like before, we're going to get our center square around our center square of our block. I'm going to look at my lines and my seams and match things up as best I can. Oh, that looks very lovely. I have to admit I did a pretty good job. So we're going to trim this and we're going to trim that. There we go. We have our first trim. Rotate it. Get that center square back in. And in this case, your edges are going to match up to where you just cut. Unlike the other ones where there really wasn't a place to line them up, this should line up with what you just cut. Your center square in the middle, your seams, Everything should look very lovely. Yes, there we go. I'm going to cut that. 
I'm going to cut that. And I see I've got a little stray, there we go, a little stray piece ah, on the one side that got wonky on me. Oh, and it did on the seam there. It didn't press hard enough. Okay, there we go. So using our log cabin trimmer, trim tool two, hoof mea, that's a mouthful. I now have a lovely 12 and a half inch log cabin quilt block that is going to finish as a 12 inch log cabin quilt block. And yes, I find it very nice. You've got a three inch center and then one and a half inch strips. And at first I'll admit when I saw how they were doing it, I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna like that center square being so much larger than my strips. But right now, looking at the block, I think it looks very, very, very nice. And so I'm excited to see how these are gonna lay out when I work them together, you know, as, as a grouping with my other block. So we shall see, you know what? I might need two more and then put a square table topper together. Hmm. Wish me luck that there's still fabric in my stash for all of these fabrics. I know I have enough red and I know I have enough of that one, but I'm not sure about the rest of them. So I hope you found that very helpful. Please subscribe to my channel to make sure you're notified. And oh, also hit the little bell icon. You can subscribe, but then until you hit the bell icon, you really won't be notified every Friday when I put out a new video. And you know what? You're gonna wanna know. I'm coming up with all sorts of great stuff. I'm thinking more and more towards the holiday as well. Well, I guess it depends on when you're watching this. For me, it is August. So I hope you found that helpful. Leave me comments. Let me know if you have any questions, if I can help you out with anything, or just let me know that you did find it helpful. I appreciate you coming here and watching my YouTube channel. Take care and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video today. You can follow me by doing one, subscribing to this YouTube channel, hitting the bell icon on the subscribe button so you're notified every time I drop a new video. But you can also find me over on Facebook, Wendy J. Haney. So facebook.com slash Wendy J. Haney. Also, I have a Facebook group for people that love needlework, books, wine, all sorts of things also. The name of the group is called Life Fulfilled Quilting Needlework Wine. Basically, you can't miss it. It's facebook.com slash group slash life fulfilled. You'll be able to find it. You can also find me over on my website, wendyjhaney.com. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I appreciate all your comments and feedback that you're providing me. Take care.